Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, we are gonna talk about the do's and don'ts of scroll design. So, what do I mean about do's and don'ts? Well, we're gonna go over the do's first and then we'll go into the don'ts later. So, the very first thing that you should be looking at for good scroll design is, first and foremost, and the most important, is flow. You want flow of the scroll work and you want that to be baked into the design. It doesn't just happen by happenstance. So what do I mean by flow work? At the very basic end of the spectrum, what makes a good scroll is it has a beginning, like in this case, it has an origin point where it starts from or grows from, and then it has an end point. And the end point is the finial or the final or the portion that's going to be the main focal point of that scroll. So you want to take and have an end point. Now some will consider, you know, this the beginning point because this is how you start the scroll. But in, in design work, that is your end point. That is where the scroll is going to be placed in its final position within the confounds of a framework or anything like that. So... That's step one. You need to establish that. Well, we need to create flow in this piece. Well, can it grow out of nowheresville? No, it cannot. So we balance this piece out and give it another grow point. So now it's growing from the center and the scroll goes out here and then it comes out the opposite end. Now this has this scroll just happens to have an upset 90 degree corner in it or two of those and then the scrolls or the snub in scrolls on each end. Uh, this could be anything with just a basic S scroll. You want to create flow. You want it to come from somewhere and end somewhere else within your design. Now flow comes into balance. We want to balance our piece. We want to balance our subject matter within the frame. So as you can see here, this doesn't just start here and just doot, end out in the middle of nowheresville. No, it continues on that flow and it's balanced out by an equally heavy or an equally visually impressive piece on the opposite end. This is the reason why there are the most common scrolls used in ironwork are S scrolls like you see here and C scrolls that you don't see here, but generally look something like this. You usually have some sort of scroll work. You guys get the point. A C scroll, just like so. There's C scrolls and there's S scrolls. Those are the most used two different types of scrolls that you will see in ironwork. And the reason for that being is that they balance each other nicely. One end of the scroll balances the other end of the scroll nicely. Now, the last do that you want in ironwork is you want to take and make sure that your scrolls have a purpose. Having a scroll that just comes off this corner and goes like that, it does not have a functional purpose and it looks ugly, looks terrible. So that's going to, so those are the things to think about when designing your scroll work here. Now, the next thing that I would like to talk about is the don'ts in scroll design. So as you can see here, we have negative space, right? We have this negative space and this wouldn't fly by code, right? If there was a code enforcer and this was a gate or a railing, this would need to be smaller than four inches uh, square. Any one part couldn't be larger than four inches so you don't have people sticking their heads through and getting caught or things like that, okay? So modern welding, with modern welding, you see a lot of stuff like well, like my previous example, you'll just see scrolls that come off like this and they just throw that in there just so this way it fills that negative space. And it might be a big negative space filler or something like that, but it completely interrupts the flow of the scroll and it 
creates an unbalanced situation. Simply because we can whip out the arc welder and arc weld something on doesn't mean that we should. So that's the first don't of scroll design. Do not do that. Now, does that mean you can't whip out an arc welder and put together scrolls? You have to forge weld them and do them all traditional? No, that doesn't mean that. But you should take a lesson from our forefathers and create balance within your design. So how do we reestablish that balance? How do we create flow? Same thing. We're still closing up that negative space, but now we have created flow into the piece. Now we've created flow, but we haven't created balance. So how do we balance this out? Because now this is heavy and this is not. This has a lot of iron on one side. This does not. Well, that can be accomplished many ways. The easiest way is just to add another little scroll on this end to help balance that corner piece out. So you can add an extra scroll over here to take and balance that out. And now you've got a much more pleasing looking scroll. Or you can don't even have to be near the frame. It could come out this way. And now we have reestablished the balance once again. Even though these are two separate sizes and these are two separate, uh, two separate ends of the scroll, again, you can see this is a little shorter of a scroll, this is a little bit larger of a scroll. We have still created not only flow, but balance. It has an origination point, which is starts here, and then it has a determinant or an end point, which you can see out here on the end. And now we have established balance. These, that's the key for getting really good design work done on your scroll work. So let's move this out of the way here real quick and we'll look at another example of balance. We'll look at this door knocker, for instance. Now this door knocker is not complete, but as you can see, it has a lot going on with scrolls. It has a lot of scrolls going on. So what I'm attempting to do with this back plate or this escutcheon plate is here we've got similar scrolls. They're all originating from one place, which is down here, right? This is an origination point right here is this square or from behind the door knocker. They all have origination point. And then they all end up mostly the same. But it would look real weird if I didn't add any scrolls on this end. If we got rid of that and it just had on this end in a door knocker up there, it would look really weird and unbalanced. So on this particular piece, I have started to create scrolls the same size, doing the same things that you would see over here on this end. Again, staying within those compounds of those laws and that balance that we are trying to create. Now we have balanced the piece with heavy on this end, heavy on this end, light in the middle. And that is what makes that look so good. Same thing with the door knocker, as you can see here. There's a lot going on with the door knocker. Just a lot going on with the door knocker itself. There's a collar in the middle, but that collar is a central focal point where all of the scrolls have now a beginning or origination point and a terminant or, de or definitive end to them. Whatever I did on this side, I did so on this side. Whatever I did up here, I folded down and I did it down here as well. This not only creates our flow, but this creates balance. And that is what we are after is that nice, perfect flow and balance in our ironwork. Because ultimately what we're trying to Im imitate is nature. So good scroll work will imitate nature. So if you think about it on a piece like this, something that might look really good in this piece is some form of scroll work where you can imitate nature to get balance into this. Think of your scroll work as more of like a vine, right? Think of your scroll work as a plant. That is what you're trying to do. You're trying to get your 
ironwork to look lifelike. It's the whole purpose behind having scrolls in the first place. Otherwise, we start developing sterile structures like we are so used to seeing in our modern everyday lives. I mean, there's nothing wrong with certain sterile structures. You can make all guys make good livings at forging sterile structures like what you're seeing here. And again, this is all, you know, this could be mortised and tendoned through. This could still have really, again, it could be very neat. This could be a very neat structure on the end, but this isn't scroll work, right? So the purpose behind scroll work is, and then the purpose behind me showing you this is the difference in the two agendas here. In our modern life with modern arc welding and equipment like that, we just figure that we can do the same things uh, that we see out there on regular like little balcony railings, really cheap balcony rails and things like that, is that, oh, we need some sort of scroll in here. Um, okay, well, we're gonna do something like this, and then we're gonna do another one like this, and then maybe one like this. Okay, that's good scroll work. This is terrible scroll work. There's no flow to the design. There's no beginning and end points. That is terrible scroll work. You want to stray away from this because this is what we do when we don't have that artistic eye. When we're just contracted out to just make something, right? When we're just, just contracted out to, and the client says, hey, just make it pretty, okay? Make it look kind of fancy. This is what we resort to when we are fabricating and things like that. And we really need to stray away from this as blacksmiths. We want to create, like our forefathers did, out of necessity for both design and otherwise, natural flow to our scroll work. So that's it for today. Drop your comments and questions down in the comment section down below. Thank you to all the channel members who make this content possible. God bless each and every last one of you out there, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.